back with the Vermont House Government Operations Committee. We are meeting to look over what we hope to be the final language on S-354, the pared down version of it. Um, we are assembled now with our Legislative Council and all of our committee members and um, Representative Merwicki, would you be willing to report this on the floor tomorrow? <laughs> it, it, as long as Senator White isn't watching. <laughs> <laughs> that is a complicating factor since she is your constituent and and i am sure to hear from her yes <laughs> well the bill was perfect and nobody nobody had any concerns so um and it's still perfect and we have eliminated any concerns that we heard about so um, so Betsy Ann and Tucker, why don't you guys take it away? Show us what we're looking at for some emergency provisions for our municipalities and school districts. Hello, uh, if it's okay, I'll do a share screen um, while the doc is being posted, if that's all right. If Andrea will let me. We've got three, uh, two versions up here um, because I didn't know how far the committee wanted to go with this. Um, let's take a look at draft 3.2 first. There's a 3.1 and a 3.2. The difference between the two is that 3.2 would apply only to towns and school districts. Um, 3.1 would apply to all municipalities. So I just offered 3.1 just in case you wanted to extend this Australian ballot authority beyond towns and school districts. But for right now, let's just look at 3.2 that's limited to towns and school districts. Um, so this 3.2, again, this is a strike all to the bill with only this one section that would say, notwithstanding the two provisions of law that require the voters of a town or school district to vote, to apply the provisions of the Australian ballot system to the annual or special meeting of the municipality, because municipality is just a catch-all term for both town and school district. In the year 2021, a town or school district may apply the Australian ballot system to any or all of its annual or special meetings held in the year 2021 by vote of its legislative body. So for a town, that's its select board or city council. For school district, that's its uh, school board. It goes on to say that the Secretary of State may waive statutory deadlines or other statutory provisions or provisions set forth in a school district's articles of agreement related to a municipal election as necessary in order for a municipality to apply the Australian ballot system to its meeting in accordance with subsection A. This waiver authority applies to statutory provisions set forth in a municipal charter or provisions set forth in a school district's articles of agreement if the waiver is requested by the municipality. If that language looks familiar to you, where did it come from? It's coming from your Act 92. Um, you have es essentially this same exact language for all municipalities. Yeah, I was, yeah, I just, in Act 92, in the uh, provisions of Act 92, but only for the year 2020. So that's why that, that authority is ending in the year 2020. This would extend it just for towns and school districts in the year 2021. Because this draft 3.2 would be limited to towns and school districts, um, there was some feedback from the Education Committee a, a chair about defining school districts. So it's not just your normal town school district. It could be a union school district, for example, and they even had language suggesting a regional career technical school, center school district. So um, according to language that they provided to define school district, um, this would use um, their proposed school district definition, meaning a school district as defined in 16 BSA sub section 11 sub 11, which defines uh, school districts to include your standard town school districts, as well as union, municipal school districts, all our normal school districts you think of, plus the definition of the regional career technical center school district as separately defined in 16 VSA 1571. 
effective date on passage, and then the uh, title of the bill would be amended to be an act relating to using Australian ballot for town and school district meetings in the year 2021. So that's draft 3.2 limited just to towns and school districts. I had draft 3.1 just in case you wanted to extend this to all municipalities. Um, so other municipalities might include a village, a fire district, a water district, um, or any of the other utility type districts that exist in the state. If you wanted to take it that far, I didn't know if you wanted to. Um, so just in case 3.1 is there, just using the more general term municipality. So allowing any municipality legislative body in the year 21 to apply the Australian ballot system to any of its annual or special meetings um, in the year 21 by vote of the legislative body same statutory of state waiver authority, and then the title would be an act relating to using Australian ballot for municipal meetings in the year 21. I'm going to stop share for now, and I think you have access to or should have access to these docs. Documents on are online. Page. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Andrea. Um, committee questions, discussion? Go ahead, John. Thank you. Uh, Betsy Ann, the petition thing's out. I did not include your petition thing. Um, I failed to do that, I'm sorry. Um, because you wanted to include that, you didn't tell me that you wanted to make it permissive um, for Australian ballot, but you didn't tell me to get rid of the petition. So I need to do that, I apologize. In the rush of things, I did not include- I don't totally it. understand. Just Sorry about that. I would need to include that. So we should decide whether we're going 3.2 or 3.1. Um, Mike Merwicki has a hand up. Uh, I'm just checking to see if I actually have any say in this. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've already covered the part that you don't have say in. So yes, you have say in this. Okay. Well, no, I just wanted to share that uh, about 20 years ago, uh, I was elected the chair of a statewide group that organized after school care programs. And people said, oh, that was nice. And I said, well, the situation was, I was at this meeting. I had to take a phone call because we had a problem at the program back home. And when I came back in the room, I had been elected chair of this committee. <laughs> yes. Deja vu all over again. Be, be careful what happens when the group you're working with notices your absence. <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> all right so my inclination is that we want this to cover all of the school districts as the concern was raised by uh, the education committee that uh, they wanted to make sure uh, school districts union districts were all set um, and that we should also do all municipal bodies um, because villages and water boards and all and the like might still have challenges doing their annual meetings through the end of this pandemic. So that would be my inclination. Anybody want to weigh in? No, I agree. JP? Yes, I, I, was, I totally agree with you. In fact, I had my hand up when you said it, I lowered it. But yes, I think that's the best way it covers everybody. And assist everybody as as necessary if uh, they need it. So I, I go with that. Thank you. Okay. Other committee discussion. Mike. Mike's got a thumbs up. Good deal. Yeah, I agree with JP. All right. Well, without objection, we will just give Aunt, uh, Betsy Ann a moment to, to bring over the language regarding petition signatures. And I think we will want to check in on this um, or, or recommend to the newly formulated Government Operations Committee in January to check in on this.
Jim Harrison. Madam Chair, are we going to convene at all Thursday or Friday as a committee? We can if you'll miss us. <laughs> well, I don't want to just say goodbye. And no, I didn't. I didn't know if we might fit in a five-minute Zoom session. Um, certainly want to say goodbye to Marsha. Um, she bailing on us. <laughs> Well, I hope that we could do that. Yes, JP. Let me throw out 10 o'clock Friday morning. Just to get people thinking 10 o'clock Friday morning. Probably so my sense there. of Friday is that Friday is going to be a bit of a hurry up and wait day as we wait to see what's coming back when from the Senate. Um, do, do we have two, two house or two four sessions on Friday? Well, we have them penciled in. I I don't know that we're definitely going to use them. Oh, okay. So why don't we why don't we make tentative plans to um, to have a uh, a Zoom on Friday between floor sessions? I don't want to have you come in before ten a.m. If floor is at ten and we take a break, we can decide at that point um, that we're going to get together to say our goodbyes, eat our lunch together. Rob's bringing donuts. Right. right. I think Jim actually could buy us lunch and just pay for it all through this Venmo. Did you know that the Wayside is open for dine-in? I saw a big banner on the... It, it is. And I, if Jim would like to spring for it, I'd go get gift certificates for everyone. <laughs> So I saw a headline in Times Argus, but I didn't have a chance to read it. Uh, evidently, the Wayside also um, has been in business long enough that it survived the last pandemic. Is that correct? I, I, I read that as well. That's impressive. I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't a pandemic caused by their cooking. <laughs> uh, Warren. I, I just wanted to... I wanted to remind folks that uh, Dr. Fauci and others at the CDC have said that data shows that dining in increases twofold your chances of catching the virus. That dining in any of these restaurants doubles, doubles your chances as wow. opposed to dining outside or not going to a restaurant anyway. And then there's no doubt that the restaurant industry has been hit harder by this thing than any other segment of our society. But, uh, well, I'd be very careful about dining in a restaurant. I'll be right back. I'm uh, speaking with the chair of education. What's taking Betsy Ann so long? <laughs> Jim. She can't hit me from this distance. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking for Rob. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a little disappointed in myself. I mean, she actually, she waited till the last couple of days to make a mistake this year. <laughs> I, I know it's the first one she's made, but. In the uh, biennium. Well, that's, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Not that I'm counting or anything, but. All right, Betsy Ann's gonna disappear for a moment and put the finishing touches. Warren, is your hand just up from before? I'll lower it for you if you want me to.
Okay, I think we're good. Um, one second here. I am going to, um, first let me just, I'll save this as a PDF and send it to all of you. Sorry for the hold up. I have so many versions of docs open. It's, I had to recreate. Is someone hungry? <laughs> I hear some growling. Sounds like Rob's dog. That was here. There is a dog downstairs. I'm sorry. I couldn't tell if it was a dog or Jim. <laughs> okay. Let me, I just emailed it to you all. This is draft 4.1, adding back in the waiver authority, or excuse me, the suspension of the uh, requirement to collect voter signatures um, for any municipal meeting. So if we're good to go, I will do a share screen. Okay, here we are. This would be draft 4.1. Your strike all, it's for municipal meetings in the year 2021, notwithstanding those two provisions of law that require the voters of a municipality to vote to apply the Australian, the provisions of the Australian ballot system to the annual or special meeting of the municipality in the year 2021, any municipality may apply the Australian ballot system to any or all of its municipal meetings held in the year 2021 by vote of its legislative body. Here's the new language in sub two, notwithstanding 17 VSA 2681B or any other provision of law to the contrary, a person shall not be required to collect voter signatures in order to have the person's name placed on the ballot as a candidate for a local election that is held at a 2021 municipal meeting. There in sub B is that waiver authority for the Secretary of State to waive statutory deadlines in order to allow municipalities to move to uh, Australian ballot. This is the same language that the General Assembly already enacted for municipal elections in the year 2020. Those are still, that authority is still ongoing. Um, and now this would pick it up and apply it to 2021. I'm gonna get rid of that sub C. I was working with that old doc. I'm getting rid of sub C. You don't need that sub C definition of a school district because you don't have it in here. So I'm getting rid of sub C. I just did that on the fly. There's be no subsection C in this draft 4.1. We'll call it draft 4.2. Time stamp Mike of 355. Mike has his hand up. Um, Mike, go ahead. Thank you. Betsy, I have a, a question. I believe um, we heard earlier from the Secretary of State's office that other ballot questions for town meeting uh, don't have to have um, signature on a petition also. Is that, am I remembering accurately? You're muted. They were saying that a uh, a town can choose, a town legislative body can choose on its own to put on the uh, ballot any um, questions that otherwise would have been submitted by voter petition. So for example, they gave the, the example of a, 
a prior petition for a budgetary appropriation. Um, instead of requiring people to submit a voter petition, the town legislative body on its own could submit that question to the voters. So it's not a statutory authority to actually waive the signature requirement for those voter petitions. It's just the uh, town legislative body could act on its own to um, propose those questions to the voters. So people, if a town doesn't agree, big picture, if a legislative body doesn't agree with putting a um, for example, a budget appropriation on the ballot. Um, some a person would still have to collect voter signatures for a voter petition to have it placed on the ballot. But that's only for public questions, not for candidates. Yep. So it's up to the town boards. Yes, if if they if they want to do it on their own. Thank you. Hi. Jim? Yeah, just whenever appropriate, I would move that we adopt draft 4.1 as a strike call amendment to S354. And I did just change it to 4.2 because I just sent you 4.1 with that erroneous definition of school district, which you don't need anymore. So if you want to make it 4.2, because I deleted that. What I was saying C. is I meant 4.2. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for working with me. <laughs> Thank you for working with us. <laughs> all right. Uh, committee discussion. Does it meet all of your concerns? Yes. All right. I see Jim and Mike with hands up, but I'm going to lower them because I'm going to assume that you're good to go. Um, any other committee discussion? Jim? You know, the vice chair lowered our hands this morning. Did he do that for you in my absence? JP? Just, just trying to verify um in and um section one subsection two the last sentence uh that means being placed on a ballot candidate for a local elections held at a 2020 municipal meeting now the, the word municipal just trying to verify will cover town and school districts is that correct that is correct municipality is a general term for governmental incorporated units. So it includes towns, school districts, fire districts, villages, water districts, all of those units of government. Great. And that's what that was my belief. I just wanted to verify that. Thank you. Yeah. All right, we have a motion on the floor here. Are we ready to vote? <clears throat> All right, Marsha, when you are ready, let's just take a moment to note, recognize that this is quite possibly the last roll call vote that Marsha as our, as our committee clerk will take for us. So let us hope. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> for your sake and for ours. <laughs> and we do so appreciate your work in that position. So thank you. Thank you. Whenever you're ready. Okay. Gannon? Yes. Kitz Miller? Yes. Rowicki? Yes. McClare? Absolutely, maybe. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Harrison? Yes. Gardner? Yes. Pulasic? Yes. Cooper? Yes. Brownell? Yes. Colston? Yes. Copeland Hansis? Yes. So it's a unanimous 11 0, 0 vote. All right. What is the most expeditious way to get this information to the clerk so that it can go in on notice? 
So I did just forward you that 4.2 that you just approved. And so whoever the reporter is can just uh, send it over to just eat by email to the house clerk's office. Okay. So Mike forward that um, to the clerk's office and you might wanna just ask him for confirmation uh, just to be sure. All right, any other business for the committee before we go off stream? I'm not seeing any. Mm, Mike. Thank you, Marsha. Good job, Marsha. Thank you. All right, I think we are done with official business, so let's go off.